During a Stephen Colbert Late Show Conda, Prince Harry stated that freedom best describes his future. If Prince Harry's 416-page autobiography Spare didn't reveal all there is to know about him, late-night host Stephen Colbert has a treat in store. In a pre-recorded interview that aired on The Late Show on Tuesday, the Duke of Sussex opened up to Colbert about his hopes for the afterlife, his favorite sandwich, a cheese and ham toasty with Dijon mustard on top, his aversion to snakes, and much more. The nearly 10-minute Colbert Questioner at Conda segment aired weeks after his appearance for a lengthy discussion with Colbert about his book, Spare, which sold 3.2 million copies in its first week on shelves and elicited a lot of laughter and applause. Prince Harry, a dog lover, thinks that after death, we become animals. The questions Colbert posed to the Duke included his favorite action movie, Gladiator, favorite scent, that of his wife, Duchess Meghan, most used phone app, Better Up, and whether he preferred cats or dogs, dogs, obviously? Prince Harry responded to Colbert's question about what happens to us after we pass away, I think we become animals. Colbert clarified that Prince Harry was referring to reincarnation by asking if there was a particular animal he would like to return as. It was most likely an elephant, Harry said. Colbert asked Harry to sum up the rest of his life in five words as the conda came to a close. Freedom and joy. Space, clarity, and love said he. Spare's memoir is chock full of personal information. Prince Harry and Colbert first met in early January to talk about Prince Harry's autobiography, Spare. There is much to learn from the tell-all memoir, which provides plenty of drama and insider knowledge of the inner workings of the royal family, but also a thoughtful, nuanced recollection of the most significant stories the general public believed it knew about Harry. In another news. Queen appeared relieved. During a turbulent period, Fergie could assist her with her poor son. In a recent interview, Sarah Ferguson discussed her relationships with Prince Andrew and Queen Elizabeth II. The Duchess of York revealed her close bond with Her Late Majesty and spoke kindly of her ex-husband Prince Andrew. Sarah, better known to her friends and fans as Fergie, stated in a recent interview that she will always be grateful to have had even a minute of the late Queen's time. The Duchess added in an interview with The Telegraph, We grew even closer because her poor son has been through so much turmoil over the past three years, and I believe him was very relieved I could help her with him. But I've loved and admired her my entire life. She was actually more like a mother to me than my mother was. Although the Queen never publicly stated that Andrew was her favorite child, it was widely believed that she had a soft spot for him. In response to the question of whether the last three years have brought her close knit family even closer, Fergie asked how her interviewer would feel if her daughter fell over at school. The Duke's wife said, say something like, get up, come on, everything's fine. You do not want her to experience pain. And seeing what Andrew has gone through makes me sad, in my opinion. When questioned about the late Queen's assurance that Sarah would stand by her side even after her passing, Sarah responded, she was aware. I'll always be available. Always. Since I cherish her. The allegations against the Duke of York, which he categorically denies, were made by Virginia Jufri, who claims to be one of the victims of Jeffrey Epstein, a convicted sex offender. This is the tumultuous time Fergie is referring to. The public's perception of Prince Andrew began to decline in November 2019, when he agreed to an extensive interview with Newsnight's Emily Maley's that centered on his relationship with Epstein. Furious criticism of the Duke for not expressing enough sympathy for the victims of the dishonored financier during the 45-minute meeting was received. Days later, Andrew made the announcement that he would temporarily leave his public responsibilities as many of his patronages began to re-evaluate their relationships with the monarch.